Regular. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's always Technical sorry. difficulties. <laughs> Don't they have a filter for that? For what? For like girls to get a beard on their face. A filter. A filter? IG don't, don't. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We recording. Yeah. Okay. Well, third episode we here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. So Soto's not here today, obviously, because there's a female next to me. Mm. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? Marie. Where are you from? Oh, <laughs> All right. Let's not now, do so, intros. <laughs> Soto couldn't make it. I don't know for what reason. He probably got lit last night, and I don't know. But yikes! I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I actually wanted to talk about Papa's house because that shit is like a a dark mm-hmm. hole. You go there and you never leave it. I don't know if you, you know Papa, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, his house is the worst. He got a fire <laughs> crib. Mm-mm. But they won't let you leave. Like, my friends will not let you leave the house. It's like a binge drinking 24-hour kind of thing. Yes. Yeah, hookah smoking to like 4 o'clock. Not to 4 o'clock the, the next, next day. day. Like, when we did the podcast, wow. he went, we dropped him off at Papa's house last week. And he did not leave till the next, very, he didn't leave till like Sunday night. Shaking my head, Soto. Right? <laughs> you should be here. But it's okay because we got you. So. <laughs> Soto, I'm not against you. You see how they come for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So you don't agree with us? Huh? I do. But, you know, what if something else happened? What if it's he woke good. up this morning and his stomach was on tilt? He couldn't stop shitting. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start the podcast with shit? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Oh, man. <clears throat> so. Girls, do you guys drink iced coffees and immediately need to take a shit? It happens. And another thing girls don't talk about is hookah makes you want to take a shit. <laughs> Tobacco <laughs> is crazy. Hookah they is all be in the club it. holding their ass cheeks together. <laughs> you be holding your ass cheeks in the club? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like hookah doesn't like do that to me, though. Mm. It, it gives me a headache, if anything. But Right. Sometimes it's like a laxative <laughs> it does to that me. To sometimes. Pizza. Like, I can't drink hookah if I'm not... Drinking like liquor. If I if, if I have hookah, did I say I'm not drinking? Yeah, liquor? I mean <laughs> drink, drinking, drinking hookah. hookah. I mean smoking hookah. Like if I'm if I'm sober and I'm smoking hookah, like I just feel nasty, like a nasty ass feeling. But if I'm drinking, <laughs> you, feel like, you feel like a custy just smoking. <laughs> oh, dude. And I'm just like getting mad, lightheaded, and feeling nasty. Right. Like, but if I if I'm drinking, then it kind of like I'm chilling. Is it just me or like as we got older? We can't smoke hookah anymore. Like we used to. Yes, that's true. I don't know how, but like me and Lee used to smoke hookah all the time. <laughs> like weekends, every like me weekend. Up and just be like yeah. smoking hookah. Just me and her, like crackheads. Like, <sighs> yes. Like, and now, not unnecessary. All right, so my question is who was setting up the hookah? Both of us. Yeah. Wow. Melanie. <laughs> wow. Yo, I always used to lie about not being able to. Like, I used to say I mm-hmm. don't know how she to. She didn't know how. And then randomly do it and then say somebody else did it. It was like a mystery. That was one thing about me and my now, friends. Mel, she, she don't really like setting up the hookah, but her hookah be fire. No. They do. Be hookah girl. <laughs> right? Let's I get her right? job. Let's get I, need, job. I need a job, guys. The stay at home mom life ain't it. We still nervous, by the way, guys. Like, as soon as this shit says start. We still be nervous. It's so. all good. But in a good way. We like nerve sighted. Right. Nerve excited. Nervous nerve. and excited. Nerve sighted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By the way, we hit 18K views on TikTok. So it's up. With the, with the clip? Mm-hmm. 18K views. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of good feedback. Shout it's out to crazy. listeners and everything else. Yeah. <clears throat> but, so you had a question for us. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Do you feel like the people you hang out with reflect on you? Mm, I do and then I don't. Because like, like reflecting in what type of way, like somebody thinking, like if I'm with the wrong crowd, they think that I'm, I'm that safer type of person. Or like, do I, or like as in, am I going to get influenced by somebody else? No, like you personally, like, do you feel like, your, the people you hang out will reflect on you in any way, shape, or form. I, I do. I do think that. Because it is, it's also all about um, <clears throat> mentality. Like, if you're around people that drink all the time, smoke all the time, not doing nothing with, 
not doing nothing with your life, this and third, like you're gonna would, get sucked in. How are they helping you? Yeah, <clears throat> exactly. For me it's like it's not really like I don't I'm not judging like if like I had a stripper friend or a teacher friend or something else. Like for me it's not really that. Like I don't care what you do with your life. Like I respect everybody the same. For me it's more like are you matching my frequency are you on my same level mm -hmm. are you do you have the same like morals and principles as me because like you could drag me down in that sense like if i'm on a healing journey and then i feel like if i'm hanging around people that are like making fun of like me trying to grow as a person you don't need like you like oh i changed like you know you could tell somebody like yo i really changed mm -hmm. and then they start saying no you didn't because remember when you did this why are you reminding me of somebody i used to be like right. i'm trying to grow that's a form of hate and there, that does happen with like your friend group, and I feel like that reflects on you. Like that's like hidden animosity, really care. also. Yeah, I don't really care if, how you say that. I don't really care what people think. Mm -hmm. For me, it's more like what I feel inside about you. Like, are you helping me better? Especially myself? as we Can grow in life, um, like us now as moms, we don't necessarily do the same things as everyone else we used to hang out with do. We don't really see anyone um, quite often anymore either. But in the sense of them understanding where your friend is now at in their life, I feel like that's a big thing with friendships. Um, I feel like people don't understand and they don't try to understand. It's just them being selfish. Like they value they value you to a certain point and like like. They see you in an image, and when you're not that image, it's like oh, you changed. She's oh, changed. Yeah. This and that and the third, like. Not like, knowing the whole time you grew. Yes, I changed. Why are you? We all do. We all growing up. Why don't you change? Like if you're the same person you were ten years ago, then that's an issue. Mm hmm. Like it, you, that's definitely true. You shouldn't be the same person you were before. Okay. I mean, you don't have to change up on people because that's that's the whole perception of like changing. It's like oh, he changed up on me. This and that. Like no, you out. Like you grow up. You out. Either outgrow people or you just you're not on the same level as somebody else. So obviously, like if you're if you're doing something all the time, and I'm just not on that type of time, I'm not gonna be with I'm not gonna be with you all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it's and not I, me changing. Is just like that's not where I'm at in my life. It's not me changing. Is just my environment's changed, my mindset's changed. You know. It also means that you don't you don't love your friends any less either. Right. Um. Just because you're in a different space mm -hmm. at the time as well. Like we all go through different <clears throat> stages in our life. We all evolve into different versions of ourselves and that's really what life is about and if someone isn't really there for you in the moment of you trans transforming basically into whoever you're destined to be then you should know that okay well they're not meant to be in this next chapter of my life and that's okay too <clears throat> people right. tend to not you ever met people that like when they go through something Instead of them trying to like heal from it and not do it, they inflict the same thing that was done to them on other people. Oh yeah. That always happens. Like, how can you inflict what was done to you or what you or what you've seen hurt somebody you love? Like they can blatantly see it or experience it and they'll still inflict it because that's some that's some sort of self sabotage. Like people don't take the time out to like understand what's going on. That happens in friendships a lot too. Cause when you're trying to grow and stuff and you're like, yo, bro, yo, sis, like, I'm trying to grow and this, that, and the third. And you're trying to explain to them, like, oh, this is happening. They won't understand. And then later on in life, when they're at that moment, they're like, oh shit. Now they're having that transition. Cause everybody transitions at their own moment. That's why I try not to judge anybody. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you just not there yet. And right. that's okay. It is what it is. But sometimes it's too late to rebuild a friendship. Like once you already shit on something so much, and then at a certain part, a part in life when you realize, like, oh wow, I understand now where my friend where was coming at. from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's already too late because you waited too late to get it. Right. Sometimes your friend is not always moving funny. They just don't moving on in life they try and, and you don't know what a per, what it takes for a person to change their mindset that's another thing Oof. that's a journey in, in itself, itself. <laughs> that what? Not with. right um no she was just basically <clears throat> saying that like a healing journey and everything like we don't we don't know what a person's actually going through 
in that moment to kind of judge them and say, you know, they oh they've changed or mm-hmm. take make it about you basically and feel offensive towards them changing or whatever the case is. Like right. healing yourself is probably the hardest thing that you're gonna do in life. So that I saw something where it was like that is is in order for you to change, you have to be the person that you you literally like. Even though you feel uncomfortable, in order to change, you have to apply those changes on an everyday basis, even though you don't feel comfortable with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, changing is uncomfortable. <laughs> Healing is uncomfortable. But the, they're like, calling the, yourself out on your own bullshit. That's F. what you really are. You're looking in the mirror and you're calling accountability? yourself. Accountability. Yeah, that's like I feel like the main thing of right growth right. accountability. Yeah. That's a fact. And knowing how to say sorry. I feel like a lot of people don't know how to say sorry. It'd be the smallest thing, like a sorry could fix, and then it doesn't, and you go so, so long. That's pride. And then you sit with somebody, and it's like, mm-hmm. it's I don't never want it even now. really, a, it's not really even a fallout you be having mm-hmm. with people. It'd be like a simple sorry could have fixed that, but now we got animosity and groups and all this other shit. Now there's more shit that there's a sorry is just not even going to fix at this point. Like, there's you no drag back, so right? Long. I mean, I'm a forgetful person. I feel like I I could forgive you and not, still not need you in my life. But I could forgive you for my own sake, like you know, mm-hmm. said so like yeah. leave that energy yeah. to get rid mm-hmm. of it. But I but I know that I don't need you in my life because it's not like, it's not doing me any good. Yeah, you don't like holding grudges. I don't like holding grudges. I hate holding grudges. I'm Melanie the type knows of person. That. Yeah. I'm the type of person where like I'll forgive somebody, but I don't forget, and that's mm-hmm. that's like. I'm noticing now that it's not good. It takes a toll it's not, on you. Yeah, it's not good. Like you can like honestly, can you forgive somebody but even though you're forgetting it, you're not forgetting it, like are you really forgiving because you like I'm the type of person oh. where <laughs> did I make any huh? sense? Like all right, so <laughs> if you forgive somebody, right? But then you bring it up because you you can't forget it. Are you actually forgiving the person? No. Mm, you you can. You want to know why? Everybody has... You valid to feel how you feel. And you can express yourself. You could say to somebody you love, like if it's in a relationship aspect, you could say, like, listen, I need to talk about this again. Or I'm triggered by this. PTSD is a big thing. You could sit there and say, yo, I'm triggered by this. That doesn't mean that you... Could, you could, I feel like you could forgive someone and then you still healing. Healing is not linear. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. rocky. Like, you're going to have a moment... Where you're going to think of it is life. It's your brain. Like, you can't control that. You have a moment where it, healing is not it's not what people think. You heal, then you break. You break, and then you heal. Like, it's not, oh, I'm healed, and I'm never going to feel nothing again. You're still going to feel things. You're entitled to feel how you feel. But it's do just you, not being angry. But do you actually forgive them, though? Like I think you could forgive them and still have moments that you feel pain. You cannot erase pain. I mean, you're right. Pain is pain. You feel that. Right. It's learning how to let the pain help you grow. Mm. <laughs> I feel like that, wow, that touched preach. somebody out there. Right. I know yes, that touched one of y'all. Like that in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, on, a, on another <laughs> note, I got this idea where yeah, I feel like we need to be more like innovative with the podcast and keep people on the toes and, and things like that. So I want to, if not the next podcast, one of these podcasts, I want to um either FaceTime our parents Mm-hmm. Or call them mm-hmm. and ask them a crazy ass question, Ooh. or like basically prank them, mm-hmm. and just to see what kind of reaction we get and things like that. How you feel about that? That's funny. I used to do an Indian accent and prank call my dad a lot, <laughs> oh my and God. for years. <laughs> Yo, and I used to say he owed, like he owed money. He would call me right after and be like, "Yo, they keep fucking calling me saying I owe money." And the whole time it was me <laughs> for years, for years. I, I'm not lying. I could call my dad right now. He would say it. Call my mom. And my mom used to be like, why are you doing this here, dad? I just used to get a kick out of it. So we could definitely do that. I'm with it. Pete's mom is, oof. Yo, my mom Yo, will go to her up. Let's row her up. Like, literally crazy. gonna go Like, I'm, I'm thinking, like, it's fucked up. But I'm thinking about what's gonna get the craziest reaction from her. Mm-hmm. Just for, for last and giggles. Like, fuck mm-hmm. it. I just don't know. I'm also thinking about just, like, putting... um. A couple of ideas of what we should say, what we should ask, and either like a bucket, write it down, and then we randomly pick, mm-hmm. or we specifically all have one thing to say and then do it. Like I'm not sure, yeah. And we're gonna have guests coming on, so very stay soon. Tuned yeah. to that. Very soon. We got some fire fires coming. <clears throat> so, what you feel about 
body hair, burping, and fur- farting. Furting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Girls don't fart, we furt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll burp in front of anybody. I don't care. No, but how I do you, like, burping. when is it, okay, so if you, no, because I feel like you must Not listen. in regards to you. If you was <laughs> just start, if you just started dating a girl, mm-hmm. first week, two weeks, she's over at your house, you're having a nightcap, whatever, like the movies say. <laughs> I've never seen that shit in real life. But a nightcap, <laughs> so have a drink, drink of tea, no. But if she's over at your house, y'all laying down, whatever, watching a movie, and she just farts, y'all only two weeks talking. That's not going to catch you up, girl. You're going to be like, yo, you comfortable. Yeah, I'm like, yo. Be honest. <laughs> be honest. Like, yo, you well comfortable, man. Like, huh? <laughs> huh? I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know what I'll do in that situation. That's just so awkward. Like, I don't, care if a, I don't care if a girl burps. Like, that's, it's like, I don't, I, like, I don't mm. care. Like, burping doesn't, doesn't really affect me like that, but. I've like mm. in, all, in all the years that I've known, yeah. I was known, waiting for it. I was no, no, no. I've it. I've never heard her. I've never heard. Her, <laughs> I've never heard her fart. You lying? I swear to God, you had a baby. I yeah, swear like we had room. to God, bro. She didn't fart when she was giving birth. No, mm. I must have. <laughs> I must have. <laughs> I was in, I was in that bitch. I was controlling everything. Was I not? Yeah, you I was were. like one. What? What? what <laughs> you <laughs> was like one. <laughs> so Pete was counting my contractions and telling me to breathe and. Very supportive. And she did not fart. She didn't her. fart. Not, she, she didn't, didn't shit. Yeah, she no, didn't. she did not shit. I was in so much pain, I don't remember. You I'm didn't, pro- though. I didn't. I didn't no. shit on myself. I actually know that for sure. She didn't. Um, Because I actually went to the bathroom before, and they were kind of yelling at me about that. But Going to the bathroom? Yeah. You went to grab me food or something, which I also wasn't supposed yeah, to right. do. <laughs> What's um. Problem? Hmm? Yeah, he went. He went to get me food um, while I was in labor, and the nurse called me in the bathroom, and she was like screaming at me. She was like, "Are you sure you're not giving birth?" And I'm like, "No, like I know I'm not about to push a baby out right now. Like I'm good." Um, but yeah, I, I shit on myself. You did. I ate McDonald's. You shit on yourself. I shit on myself. Ate McDonald's. And I was induced. And by the way, I almost died <laughs> during my labor. <laughs> hold on. I Wait, almost died. Not laughing at that part. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no, 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 They're not laughing at me. Almost dying. Hold on, hold on, no, no, I was in labor for fifty eight hours. No, no, no. I'm laughing because I completely forgot we talk about um you giving birth, and I'm just like, yo, you shit on yourself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> when you shit on yourself in a nigga's bed? <laughs> no, um. I shit on myself in the beginning because what happened was I was in labor for 58 hours and like I said, I almost died and the, it was a very traumatic birth. But at one point they gave me the epidural. Ugh. No, they didn't give me the epidural yet. They were trying to induce me and they put a balloon and it's like they literally put a balloon and they yeah. try to induce you. I mm. never went past four centimeters. But anyway, so when I had the first real contraction Oof. right there at a McDonald's. Yo, that shit ran through you. I'll never forget. Eddie's grabbing my <laughs> arm, <laughs> and he's like, "I'm like, I got a shit," and he's like, "It's okay, it's okay. You're gonna kill yourself." Because I was like, <laughs> I was ready to die. He, I was ready to die before I shit on myself. But then I thought about, it and I'm like, "Nah, you was, nah, like, I'm wait, 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 wait. You was holding, you was holding your shit in, bro. Holding, I was holding everything in. My life, I, my whole Damn. life flashed before my eyes. We're gonna name this I podcast was in, something. This episode. I was in labor for 58 <laughs> hours. You know what's that? For 58 hours, my heart dropped to 20. But I feel like that was meant to happen because that changed my life. Almost dying. You know how people joke about that? Like, yeah. oh, this is revolutionary. Right. No. No. It really changed my life. You know that. For the whole first weeks, I was yeah. like tra- traumatized. I don't know if I had postpartum. Well, I did have postpartum. But for that the whole first week, week mm-hmm. I was seeing Landon like dead. Like, that's a real thing. What girls like go through breathing, after, like, like yeah, I would see out. him blue mm-hmm. and start freaking out. I think he was dead because he came out dead. They had to resuscitate him. Right. But yeah, that was that was a. We had two different, very sad, very story. different. We had two stories. different birth stories. <laughs> yeah. Very. She different. was like, I was like one, two, three, oh, and I'm over yeah. here like. Preston came out within twenty something minutes. Mm-hmm. That was probably the roughest part because he was just ready to go, but everything else took. Forever to get there. But once he was ready, it was like, go time, mom. Like, I'm here. But everything else really, really sucked. Like, our experience with labor was, it, was, it wasn't it was a bad one. It was just like, honestly, I'll, shout out to our fucking nurse, bro. Mm-hmm. Our oh nurse, God. she amazing. needs to be a doctor. Like, she needs to <laughs> go back to all, school to be a doctor. My doctor was a 
bitch, and I'm sorry to say this. 100%. She was so just not compassionate, insensitive, just insensitive, just rude, trying to rush me through labor. It was horrible. She, she, like, Preston was coming out, you were crowning, and she was oh, literally like, Lord. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get graphic, but she was like, Stretching oh, you was out, massaging. Yeah, yeah. She, she was, was forcing, forcing the baby it. out. She was forcing the baby out. Like it was, and then I asked her to stop. Yeah, she was just and like she no. Kept going, and my mom. Shout out to my mom. Thank God she was in the freaking. She uh, had to tell the doctor something. Me. Yeah, no, my mom grabbed her arm and told her to stop. <laughs> I wasn't. My mom wasn't able to be there because remember it was when yeah, COVID. When COVID. Right. But you know what's crazy? Even though my birth, my labor was so bad. I don't, like, regret it or I don't feel like... I feel like everything's meant to happen. Like, that mm-hmm. day, that moment, how it happened, 58 hours, that shit changed me, that changed him. It was, like, it was so, like... I don't know, it's a, it's an experience. Like, sometimes the worst things that happen to you bring you Changing. to the best version of yourself. Right. Because that was probably, like, the craziest thing ever. And mm-hmm. then I, and I heard other people, because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people have different experiences... But a lot of people that I know that had those like really tra- big traumatic labors, you know, they were scarred for a long time, and certain things happened to you in your brain. Mm-hmm. I was able to address them quickly, quicker, quickly, and like really try that, to heal from it quick, quicker. That's Damn, literally I said that's heal so many times in this podcast. That's heal. Bitches. That's it's literally traumatizing though, because like what you've been through. Like I, I mean, I don't want to go further into it because it's just like yeah. very, very like. Private. That's a that's a, that's just private. I don't know if you want to talk about it. But no, I don't now, care because there's it's just, so many women out there. It's not. It's not yeah. that it's private for me. I feel like we could. I feel it. like we could just go into that deep on on some on maybe like another podcast. But it was just you you, you like you went through a lot. Yeah. Feel me? Like I have a question. So I know we've spoken about this personally throughout everything we've been through. But like, do guys go through postpartum? Like, do you genuinely, you too, Lee, like, do you feel like men actually go through postpartum? I definitely went through postpartum. I went, I went, I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Like, to be honest, I didn't know about postpartum until, I didn't know about postpartum at all until I had Preston. Mm -hmm. Then I, then I noticed what, what women go through after they give birth. Like, you guys, even with as much sisters as I have, as much nieces and nephews as I have, like, they've never really spoke to me about what they go through. And now that I understand it, it's just like, yo, it's crazy what you what you guys go through. But with guys, nobody really thinks about the guy. But like, right, like, like it's just like, oh, the girl. Like I understand it because I go through a lot, but nobody really thinks about all oh, the. You'll be alright. Like the change. It's just the a men shift in like. It's just a shift in like. Y- y'all go th- compared to what we go through and what y'all go through is obviously is is n- nothing compares it to. Like there's no comparison, but we do go through postpartum. Like just I, the shift in everything. I don't. I don't think it's postpartum. I think it's like your own set of emotions and adapting to it. It's like your own post baby feelings. Y'all mm-hmm. could get baby blues. Y'all could get all those. Y'all go to y'all. well for me, my experience. I know he definitely felt like it's. It was a traumatic. Like we cried about it for weeks. Like yeah. it was intense. And I feel like I'm really good at noticing or like watching my partner's change of emotions. So I was good at, like, even when I was healing, I'm talking about legs swollen and everything. I'm like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Like, you want to talk about it? Like, you good? Because he almost lost me and the baby at the same time. Mm -hmm. So imagine, you know, his brain. Like, I mean, for for me, it was after that. He was like, I love you so much. So Mm -hmm. I was like, whatever. But I mean, like, I'm talking about about just a shift in lifestyle. Like, I I understand what what you've been through. Like, in him going. Like, you changing your everyday like your whole routine. life just changed r- dramatically. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like you were dad, and nobody like nobody prepares you for that. Right. At all. Like right. even I don't. I just it, I don't know. It's because like I never really had a father, but I don't know if people with fathers go like do they do they like let you know what what happens when you have a kid like. Well, some don't. Our parents' generation probably didn't talk no. to us about anything. No, <laughs> so. even the fathers that be in the home, they be causing more ja- damage than the mm-hmm. fathers that are not in the home. Like it's all about the man. It takes a real man to sit there and like fight through that and trying to learn it by yourself without having an example and trying to cultivate yourself and learn your woman and be conscientious of her feelings, your feelings, it's, life yeah. adapting. That shit is a lot. Right. And and like. It's a lot, like, it's a shift, like, 
not a- not being able to do what I like for somebody who's always done what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. It's just right. like that dad guilt. shift. I do and boyfriend. No, nah, I don't get that guilt. I don't get that guilt. And to be honest, like if no, I know I, if, I, if I know I, Preston was with somebody that's reliable, then I I like I don't I don't like stress about it. Like I know Preston is good. I get boyfriend guilt. I get mom mm-hmm. guilt. So when <laughs> when I'm out and she's home with Preston, I I I feel bad the whole time. As you should. No, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you know, like, I'm not saying. A lot of women like they would see this and be like. Shut up. <laughs> you don't know what we go through. No, I'm, I'm but not, your I'm not, feelings yeah. matter. Your feelings matter. Sometimes people blur the lines. Like, everyone's feelings matter. We all changing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And shout out to the women that do it by themselves. Because, yes. yo, shout out to you. And dads. How. There's dads that do it by themselves, too, that their wife dies. Shout out to them, too. Um, I know what you mean. You're saying, like, I feel bad. Like, I'm over here living my life, and she's at home with the baby. But I think it's all about the balance. Like, if you yeah. know you there... Mm-hmm. A lot. I'm not saying you could just do it whenever you want or however you want. Remember, it's a respecting and a boundary and a conversation. But if if it's agreed and she was like, "Oh, go have fun," yeah, but I even, got it. Even then it, does, you does it, it doesn't. You still you feel. Still it? feel. I still feel bad no matter what. She tells me to go out and do whatever I'm gonna do, and it's just like sometimes it's like. That's nah, nice. That I'll you... just I'll I'll stay like. Unless like I really feel like I need to go out, then I'll go just out for air. a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Then. Yeah, because, you know, no matter what, people need their space. But do like, you know how um, that makes you a really good man that you care and want to be there for your family? Uh, yeah, yeah, of Cause course. Because there's people who are selfish, right. like a big percentage of men that are that, selfish. That goes to, like, me just, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm that. not talking shit, no. <laughs> even Even before, even before, like, pressing, I've always told myself, no matter what, like, I'm never going to put my son through what I went through. We're not having a dad and just a traumatizing thing. So, like, I'm so active that it's just, like, it's, I'm just always there. I'm always try to be there no matter what. So, if it, it's just, like, a selfishness that as, as a father, you just want to, like, always be there. So, like, he, he has that love. He has that comfort and things like that. That's beautiful. With that being said... All right, I I have a question. Um, not a yeah a question. Do why why do hurt people hurt people? Mm, we just talked about that. <clears throat> we did. Yeah, but let's like let's talk about. I know you went into it. And I was gonna that was like, that was that was it right there. They know heal. They they not healing. They want to inflict. Don't deal with those they want to inflict their pain on other people. The same thing that they did has done to, that has been done to them or somebody they love. They project it. It's like inner, I don't think like they don't deal with those traumas. They they don't heal themselves. They they're so used to being treated a certain way or or dealing with things a certain way that they're used to doing that, and that's what they're gonna do to other people. Hmm. Cause I feel like when I get tight about <laughs> something else, like let's say I'm tight about I had an argument with maybe my mother or like somebody else, like one of my boys or something like that. Sometimes I do take it out on you, and mm. it's a, obviously it's an issue. Mm-hmm. Like it's not—I don't mean to, but it's just like it comes out like that. Like I'll, I'll like give you like a little a side comment, or like I'll have an attitude and things like or that. Or mimic me. <laughs> mm. Tune in <laughs> emotional for emotional damage. Emotional damage. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yo, we had a whole conversation. Watch about everybody I don't be like, wanna, I don't know. Melanie's on the podcast. Yeah, I, don't I think y'all I got all the up. tea on their relationship. No, you only know five seconds. Five seconds. Calm down. People don't care about my relationships. It's not. It's never that deep. Trust me. You'd be so surprised no. what people care about nowadays. Nah. Tuning in. They care about know. your hat. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck <Look at> his <laughs> hat. <laughs> What's it called? But I, me, me, me and Melanie was having a disagreement yesterday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's like how the world and was, worked. And was, Soto's not here, and now I have to be on the podcast right? today, huh? Because she's <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah, mm. First of all, that's, that's, that's super annoying. That's like that you just keep leaving the chat. It's very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever y'all guys are going through, stop bringing it to the chat. I need y'all to. She nah, just I, leaves I, I, on the chat. I, I, she just I, leaves I, and then Pete's at her back, and it's like, I okay, this leave. is intense. Like, so we had a whole, told me we, to leave. We had a whole disagreement, right? And now you on the podcast. You see this shit. 
You see how they need you after? <laughs> I'm about to gang up on you. See, oh I was trying God. to chill. I was like, oh, you're such a good dad, but don't play with my sister. Beat your ass. Can I tell my Beat story? <laughs> Actually, I don't know if I want to tell her now because she's probably going to come after me after that. No, go, she's going to come after me. All right, so it was, I thought it was funny. She kind of. It, she started generalize she was, right. it so, cool. yeah long story short. so long story short we had a disagreement about something right and i was so upset that i just started like mocking her i was just like mm, like saying what you mm-hmm. were saying but like with a face like the mm-hmm. cardi b face mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and then literally right after i did it i was like damn i should have never done that he felt like bad. i felt bad like mm-hmm. it's, it's one thing to like argue but it's another thing to make fun of somebody as you're arguing knowing that it's gonna affect them in a certain way so then we went, we spoke about it after that, and she was just like like that really it really bothers her it really bothers you yeah and then first of all I I'm emotional laughing. as fuck during this whole little argument my hormones are still trying mm-hmm. to get back to normal like and he had the nerve to mock me guys all right first of all Melanie but is, that was just me I'm being child, childish mm-hmm. we all emotional but Melanie oh, I used to do that to her so now I feel bad see. I did, but, but I did that to but, her because sometimes, you know, but, but that's just, a sister thing. But it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to my sister. Only I could do that to my sister. That's, that's the moral of the story. <laughs> Only she can Stop emotionally playing. damage me. But like, me. I started... And then, and then no, when we when we was actually... Because when we, when we have a disagreement or we have an argument, we, like, the next day we start talking about shit. Right. So, like, she was telling me that mocking her is just, like, really is, like... It really hurts her feelings. Yeah. And then that right there, I started bawling and crying, like laughing. See? All right. Because it's, it's like... I don't I thought, know who you are sometimes. <laughs> you know? It's like you feel bad because you left the baby at home with her. But then when you are home, you mock because her. In my head, I'm and like, then you laugh at her. No, no, because in my head, I'm like, there's no way you feel this sensitive about me mocking you. Like, I just thought it was mad funny. I think it's been four years and Lee's looking at you and like, then I was like, and then I was like, but then she was li- really looking at me like, <laughs> yo, like up. it really, it, it really bothers me. But then that's the an emotional damage part comes from. So just like, you know what's crazy? That I, he thinks I don't already know this. She texts me 24 7. I'm playing. <laughs> I already, I already I'm, kidding, know I'm, this. Kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, honestly, though, it's beautiful a, that you guys could talk about it after y'all argue. Yeah. That's number one. Two, it's not beautiful that you laughing, though. Huh? Don't be laughing. No, 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 I wasn't laughing at the way she. I know, I, it no, was I like was. you OD'ing about if you about, are laughing, about, you're about, like, about, why about, are you like, about, like, like, he had a whole good session me. about it. But you really, that's how she really feels. Because in my head, I'm, I'm just like, there's no way you're that time. serious, are you that sensitive about you being mocked but like that. Because it's bigger than that. To her, it's probably you did trying to discredit her. I understand that. Things that I've been yeah, through yeah, before. Yeah, so. I just never met somebody that was right. traumatized from being mocked. Because you don't know how deep anyone's time. trauma so could be. You have no, to no, pay I, attention. I get it. I get it. And the, and then I was <laughs> I was being you. really <laughs> fucked up about it. I'm not gonna hold no, you. Right, right. We were talking about it, and I was just like, "Yo, like, I'm like, if I had the the soundboard that said emotional damage, yeah, I would have just played it right there, like." In person, like he he thought the shit was funny yesterday. Yo, I hope we take. I, I hope really... somebody takes all these clips and fries your ass. Nah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna get a soundboard fries and I'm gonna put ass. the emotional damage. I'm gonna do the Twitter, 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 Twitter. Twitter, 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 Twitter. Twitter. Every time we talk about Twitter, I hate Twitter. <laughs> First of all, it's dying back there right now. <laughs> he don't play with me like that. He ain't never played with me like that. Don't be mocking me. Oh my god! The other day he said I follow like I be getting when I get mad I gotta like get my point I be earthing it. No, I gotta get my point across. So like I will follow you to get my point across, and I do that to my mom and my I do that to my mom and my dad too. But that's that's childhood trauma. That's feeling like somebody didn't hear you. Right. But not me. I'm gonna be heard. That's why I'm on this podcast now. I'm getting over my I'm getting out my comfort zone and all that trying to. It's important to feel like you're Speaking heard. Speaking of comfort zone. Yes. Yeah. Is it hard to get out your comfort zone? It's, it's, for me, it's not that hard because you know me. You know yeah. I'm a creative person. You like know I've, me. I've tr- <laughs> feel me? <laughs> <laughs> I've, 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 tried, I've done tried everything like music, um, mm-hmm. a clothing line, editing videos. Like I try everything. Like I never not try something. You always have a vision for something. Yeah. And that's just me being creative and me just wanting to try new things. And I feel like I could just do whatever I want to do because that, that's just... My confidence comes from me being creative. 
So I'm just going to keep dabbling in whatever I, I could dabble in until I feel like, you know, I'm very, very satisfied. But I, I know mean, with you, yeah. like, this is definitely not... This is out of my comfort zone, guys. For both of us. Um, For Lee, too. But this first episode for me is definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, I am way too used to being on off camera, basically. Um, whether that's scene. shooting, whether that's doing photography. I mean, obviously, if, for, for whoever doesn't know what shooting is. Um, photography, business, and everything like that. Social media management. Like, in case anyone doesn't know, I run the Word on Road podcast, uh, right. Instagram. So... You guys are talking to me on there, um, <laughs> but I'm used to being behind the scenes and not in front of the camera. I want to, I want to, I know, I want to go more into, so I've never even asked you this What's at that? all. Really? Um, Interesting. What yeah. made you want to do photography, like maternity photography, out of all photography? Well, I mean, I started photography with maternity photography 10 plus years ago with our cousin, and then and I was I her did first Lee's assistant. Too. Yeah, I was, a, I was was always assistant. helping her her whole life. Um, but like, what drew, like what drew, what, yeah. what's driving me now? Being a mom. I feel like now that I've experienced the both beauty and ugliness of pregnancy. Because let's be real, it's not easy. It's tough, but it's you're creating life. You're you're a safe haven for a new life. And for me, um, it's just making women feel more comfortable in such a vulnerable time. We're not, for me, being, what, 120 pounds, going up to 170 when I was pregnant, um, my photo shoot was everything to me. That was the moment where I felt literally the most beautiful. And I feel like that's what I want to help other women get to. Whether they want the photo shoot or they're just really there for, like, just to get it over with. But I make sure that when they do come in, that's my goal right. um but even now i definitely want to say that um now the the drive in me is definitely just being a mom and just having that whole experience now many yeah. people don't know this but she didn't she started with street art right i remember your uh her first pictures were like trains yeah mm -hmm. i was outside with her in winter <laughs> storms <laughs> at like 13 but she's been in the game. <laughs> Even her shit, her shit yeah. booming now. I was chilling right? with her in the gym. I, <laughs> well, add the link, not guys. True. Yeah, like, I've seen you grow from when I first met you till now. And from your shooting and to your editing. Met. Yes. <laughs> Yo, shout um, out to Pete, though, gotten... for, like, helping people grow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm sorry, Rick. Um, I forgot. <laughs> uh, just, like, you know, I want to tell you, and I'm proud of you. Thank you. Because, like, just the hard work, the dedication, like, I've literally never seen anybody do what you do and under the circumstances that we go through and things like right. that. Like, you never give up. Yeah. And um, just, we're going to keep, you're going you're gonna to boom. I have like, you You're guys, booming now, so. but, like, you're going to, where you want to get, I know you want to get to in life and you're going to get there. And saying that, I'm going to have to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, tune in next week. Uh, subscribe, like, follow us. You want to um, say your, your Instagram for the... I'm going to add it to, like, the caption the, and everything the description? like that. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Pete um, put me on this podcast. He saw a vision. I'm the best, you heard? He's the GOAT. He likes to do so people like this. We out of here. <laughs> we lit. Word on road is a click about to blow. All right. We out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you had to zoom in on her face when he was rapping.